President Kerry, Andy, guests, fellow members. Um, I'd like to start off with some um, other business, if you don't mind. Um, I'll just need to press the people. I um, was hoping Tony would be here. Is Tony here? He's away. Oh, he's away. Okay. So we've missed out on a few dollars, but um, that's the auto reply I got from an email to Tony during the week, and it's the best I've seen for ages. And I thought you guys should know that Tony and his computer are going through a trial separation. And so I'm intrigued by that. I was hoping Tony would be here so we could see some money in there, but it's not there. Okay, other business. Um, I've just had, had word that uh, a certain gentleman in our club um, has just completed his 56th marathon. Hmm. So, all of you who didn't do a marathon on the weekend, would you mind please putting some money into the box? So, that gentleman is Olivia. Olivia, please stand up. Stand up. And Olivia, just in case you want to know who the tittle-tattle was, it was William Somerville. Okay. Uh, that's all right. That's all right. Transparency. Transparency is the name of the game. Transparency is the name of the game. All right. Now, if you want to see me put $25 into... Oh, sorry. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Um, wrong, wrong, wrong. If you'd like to see me put $25 into the Sunshine Box, I'm making a personal appeal. I'm looking for somebody who'd be happy to uh, Skype or email my son. We need somebody who has a history qualification or is an expert in the Industrial Revolution. So if any of you um, can provide that, I'll put 25 bucks into the Sunshine Box. Are there any um, early takers for that? No, if you, know, if you know of anybody, please let me know and 25 bucks will go in. Right. Um, I thought with Andy being here today that we might um, talk about oil and gas. And, uh, and so while Andy's going to do the more exciting presentation, I thought I'd at least start with some, um, you know, a bit of a quiz, get us thinking. So let's see how we go. Um, for this to work properly, all of you on, on tables, there should be at least one clicker. Have you noticed that there's a clicker? Okay. I need, I need somebody to be appointed as the clicker on the table. And I'd appreciate you uh, clicking the response. You're going to get some multiple choices. I'd, I'd appreciate you guys clicking the appropriate number on the clicker. And the receiver on my laptop there will receive your scores. So we're going to find out once and for all truly how smart you are. Because I reckon some tables have been pretending to know answers in the past. This is going to reveal the smart and uh, not so smart um, tables. So here goes. I want, to start with, I want to start with the word oil. The word oil itself, where does it come from and what does it mean? And what I'd like you to do when you're ready as a table, some form of democracy or some sort of benign dictatorship on the table, what I'd like you to do is to choose between one through to four. Now, no pressure, Andy, but it's just down to you and Kerry. So get your clicker, just get your clicker. Where's the clicker? Get your clicker out. Get your, get your clicker out. It's on the table. It's on the table. <laughs> oh, cool. And um, I need to know that everybody's clicked because the blue light should be going off. Yep, the blue lights are still going on off my receiver there. Any table not voted yet? Remember, this is meant to be five minutes. Right, Every, everybody's voted. Your votes won't count once I reveal. Okay, the answer was Greece. Greece meaning olive tree. And uh, there you go. Four of you thought because I'm an Arab, I was giving you a trick question, didn't you? You thought I was going to brag about my Arab heritage. Yep, uh, two, six, seven, only seven voted. So, can we get a better, can we get a better um, result next round? Thanks. Um, right, this next one, uh, this next one's to do with gallons. And just in case people have forgotten, I'm talking here about US gallon, which is um, 3.785 <laughs> litres. So it's a metric free zone now. So this is gallons, 42 gallons. How many gallons of petrol or gasoline come from a 42? A gallon barrel of crude oil. You've got a choice of four numbers. 
please vote. Press the number pointed in the direction of the front. No, just push the number. And your first number counts. So out of a 42 gallon barrel of oil, how much actually makes it to the petrol tank? Depends on the crude. That's a desperate answer from people who don't know, isn't it? Right. Okay, last votes in. Last votes in. Cool. The answer was 19. 19. And I'd expect that with John Boshier on that table, I'd expect you guys to get that right. Um, still, only seven tables have been voting, so that's bizarre. So some of you, you're not pressing hard enough or pointing it in this um, direction. Right. Okay. <laughs> Um, now, you might look at that and think that's terribly wasteful. Well, it isn't, because in that 42 gallons, it also produces 10 gallons of diesel, 4 gallons of jet fuel, 7 gallons of other products, 3 gallons split between heavy fuel oil and liquefied uh, LPG, and 2 gallons of heating oil. But if you did the sums, if you were really, really quick, you would have added up to 45. 42, 45. That's exactly right. That's what happens. So 42 um, gallons of crude oil actually produces 45 gallons of product, which is magic. That's right. So, so effectively, so um, other products for those who aren't sure include bitumen, waxes, kerosene, uh, textile, apparel, carpets, washing powder, drink bottles, food packaging. So it's sort of uh, it's quite pervasive in terms of where we use the byproduct. Okay, loves and hates. Oil is immiscible with water. What does that mean? There's no clicking involved here. What does that mean? What's immiscible? Won't mix. Won't mix. That's right. So it's water fearing or hydrophobic. Okay, and I know some um, people on planes and trains I've sat next to who have that same issue. Now, if we go to oil is miscible with other oils, what does miscible mean? Therefore, it's fat loving. There you go. Loves fat. So oil loves fat, and that's what miscible means. So people who, who love Mama Cass and Oliver Hardy would be um, considered miscible in their taste. And mayonnaise. Okay. Yeah, and mayonnaise. <laughs> right, cool. So the word gas comes from where? Back to your clickers now, guys. I need your voting. Let's see if we can get more than seven votes through. So the word gas comes from where and means what? Are the votes coming through? Yep, I can see the blue light going off yet. Two, three, four. You, you've already voted, I think. Yep, you've already voted. Oh, tr there we go, there's more. Yep, the blues are coming through, that's great. Okay guys, so what's the answer? The answer is Greece. It's based on the word chaos. And, uh, and so, uh, and so, oh, there are some smarties in the room. We've got eight votes. Fantastic. Well done. Right, next question. Describing gas. Gas is described through its um, properties or macroscopic uh, properties. Which of the following is not one of not one of the four properties we use to describe gas? Which one of the following four is not a macroscopic property? In other words, one of the four things we use to identify or describe gas. Sorry, not identify, describe gas, I should say. Describe gas. Please send your votes through. We've got two more questions and we're done. Okay, your votes through. We've got the votes through. Starting to come through. I can see the blue light going off. You've all done your voting. Yep, okay, forever hold your peace now. And the answer is odour. We don't use odour to describe gas. And there you go. <laughs> right. Right, 
Finally, uh, not finally, uh, penultimately, the natural gas, the main ingredient in natural gas is. Main ingredient in natural gas is. Please send your votes through. This should be fairly quick. I would have thought this is straightforward of the four. Even I knew that one. The rest I had to learn. Cool. And the answer is methane. There you go. Cool. Right. Um, okay, one, uh, one slide after this, and that is the um, who used natural gas first? States. China, Rome, England. Natural gas, where was it used first? Greece? I don't know. They couldn't pay their bill, I don't know. That's still... Right, the answer was China in 500 BC. And uh, I'm very impressed with the answers coming from Andy. Andy's basically got them all right so far. So guys, if you did think it was America, it's fair enough, but in China, um, they actually used bamboo uh, tubes to actually um, transport natural gas to where they boiled the water to, to get the salt. But finally, I just thought um, I should share a personal aspect to oil and gas. Um, I'm from a Lebanese background. We have a great um, dish that we, uh, where we spread olive oil over Arabic bread and sprinkle za'atar over it and have it under the grill. So for any of you who've never tried that before, I'd recommend that to you thoroughly. Great memories growing up of my father and us all eating that at uh, breakfast time. And uh, the only gas angle I could come up with is that sometimes my father would sort of turn that into natural gas. And so I have pleasant memories of my father's... Uh... Thanks very much.